Hey everybody, I'm Sarah, Lonesome Glory, and I'm back today with a few more things to unbox and also a little update on what ponies and palm trees is going to look like. So let's get started. So if you guys watched my last uh, unboxing video in which I got all excited about the fact that mom and I are going to ponies and palm trees, you know that there were a couple of things missing from my orders. I have with me now, I have four boxes, two of them are small, two of them are larger, and my hope is that they contain the glossy that I was missing, the missing spooky stable mate, and the vintage Premier Club box of stuff that I ordered along with it. So I'm going to start with the small boxes, the spooky stable mates, and then move on to the bigger stuff. And while I am opening these guys up, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about what to expect from ponies and palm trees. So I'm sure that everyone saw via some social media or some something that Briar released what Del Rey, the event uh, stable mate, is going to look like. It is the third generation cantering warm blood in kind of a orangish chestnut pinto. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing that uh, color in person, but I think the pattern is lovely and I'm really looking forward to getting to see him in person. So this box says that it's supposed to be delivered to my mom which is great because hers is the one that order that was missing one of the stable mates. And there is indeed one spooky stable mate inside. So that's excellent. Sounds like we're, we're all square there. I have another box that same size. This one should have two in it. So let's hope that uh, I wind up with three total to show you today. All right. So besides Del Rey, we know that there'll be the Salonero, the Bay Salonero, uh, for a, an attendee event model, which is really cool. Oh good, there's two of them in here. Look at that. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to seeing all of those in person. There'll also be the Briar Boutique, which will be all of the special runs that we'll be able to purchase. We don't get to purchase them until Sunday, although I believe the email said that they were going to have them available for us to look at or see pictures of at registration. We'll be able to check in at the host hotel sometime Friday afternoon, and Friday is the day that we are going to the polo match. So I've never been to polo before. I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, yay! Okay, I officially got all three of them. I think this is the first year ever that I've come away with all three of the spooky stalemates. So yay! <laughs> anyway, we will be going to see polo on... Uh, on Friday in, into Friday evening. Mom and I are getting in early. We're going to leave here actually um, Wednesday. We're going to leave to go to a city that actually has an airport. <laughs> Mom and I are actually leaving early for the event. We're going to leave Wednesday evening uh, to go to a city that, uh, <laughs> you know, has an airport. <laughs> we, we don't so much have one here. And we're going to stay the night and then we're going to fly out at the absolute crack of dawn on Thursday. I, I don't know. Our flight's at like 6 o'clock in the morning or something. But we'll get in at a reasonable hour to Palm Beach and be able to spend a little bit of time kind of settling in and, and such before uh, the event starts on Friday. So we're going to do that. Um, depending on what we do, I may or may not be posting much the first couple of days, the Wednesday and Thursday, but you will hear from me on Friday, especially after we get registered and then when we go to polo. Saturday is the barn tour day. I'm going to start in opening one of these big boxes. I don't know if this is supposed to be the Vintage Club or Premier Club or my missing Collector's Club. doesn't matter. I'm going to open them all. <laughs> So Saturday we we're doing farm tours. I believe we're going to three different places. I know one of them is a dressage place. Um, I haven't committed the others to memory. Um, Saturday will also be the big briar party at the host hotel. It is themed. It is a white party where they want everyone to wear white. I, I don't get it, but that's all right. <laughs> 
<laughs> it'll be fun to, to go and just spend time with other collectors. Generally at the big evening party, there is some kind of a raffle model, which hopefully we'll see at registration, but we might not see until we actually get there. So that's cool. And um, I'll do my best to show you what that is kind of as soon as I can, but we'll, we'll see there. Um, and then Sunday, the only part of the Briar event is the Briar Boutique. So Sunday will be the day that we line up with our groups and um, buy whatever of the models that we're able to. Oh, this is my missing glossy. Ooh, and this is a pretty one too. Looky there. The Andalusian, the 50th anniversary. So that's a pretty cool one. I like the color on him, so I'm, I'm very pleased. All right, sorry for the thumping. I'm getting boxes out of my way <laughs> so I can open the last one. All right, so as I'm opening this last box, um, I'll talk about the boutique a little bit. Um, I have been lucky enough in the past to get to go to two of these events. I went to the Sunshine Celebration, which was in Orlando, Florida, with my dad way back when. Um, I was in college at the time, and I don't want to think about how long ago that was, so I'm going to stop that sentence. <laughs> but uh, dad and I went to that one, and then mom and I went to Chasing the Chesapeake, which was in Delaware, Pennsylvania, kind of that area. It was, it was over a few states. Um, so I've been to the Briar Boutique at these things a few times. Um, yeah, this is going to be my vintage club, my club boxes. So that's good. Um, and they've made some changes in how they do things um, even since I've been going. At the first one, we all kind of lined up with our groups. You are given a group every time. Um, we lined up with our groups and we were given um, numbers, kind of like what you used to get when you lined up for special runs at Briarfest. So we took our numbers, they then drew one of the numbers out of a hat or something, and that was the first person in line. Um, since then, they've changed it a little bit, and they, I'm not 100% sure how they pick who's first. I think it is still a numbering system, or at least it was in um, at Chasing the Chesapeake. So we won't know, <laughs> we won't know if we'll get um, way up front or if we'll be way in the back. But they have changed how they divide up the models. As I'm sure you guys are aware, these Briar events have quite a few models and they are generally micro runs. Um, usually the biggest run is maybe 150. Um, I know at a couple of the events, the smallest run has been eight or 12. So there aren't very many of these. Um, when I first started going and I believe, yeah, even at Chesapeake, if you were at the front of the line, you could take two models, whichever you wanted. And if you were first in line and you wanted the run of eight and the one, the run of 12, that's what you got. Um, it did mean that a lot of people in the back were kind of stuck with only the larger quote unquote, larger runs. Um, got my vintage club paper here. And, um, since then, and I'm not sure when it started, I think it was with one of the, the events that went virtual. They started, um, breaking up the models into a group A and a group B. And group A were the very limited runs. Um, I don't know if they still do the runs of six and 12, um, but they were the much smaller runs. And you could select one of those. And then your second model had to come from group B, which are the slightly larger run horses. So they're trying to make it so that the um, really limited stuff is a little more spread out, which is nice. Um, I don't have any kind of a problem with that. It's just different and it'll be really interesting to see how that comes out um, in Florida this time. 
I'm also, of course, very both excited and nervous to see what the <laughs> the limited runs are. Um, I'm I'm hoping that they spare me and my pocketbook, and they don't have a lonesome glory <laughs> in the mix. Um, as you guys know, I, I try to keep that conga complete, so I'd have to go go and fight for it. <laughs> But we'll see. Okay, so this is the Vintage Club set, the, the mini and the large um, Indian pony. And it's supposed to be wood grain. And I've got to say that I'm looking really close at this horse. And there's not a lot of stripes. Like, the the color you see is a little brighter. But there's, there's no more stripes on her than you can really see. There's a few... But it's not it's not as strong as the old style decorators, um, the wood grains, or frankly, even as the mini um, Clydesdale they came out with that was wood grain. So I don't know if I got one that was just a little different, um, that painter or something, but doesn't matter. This is uh, Constia, Constantia, Const Ugh. this is the Premier Club, the um, Trotting Mare. In a pinto. I did get to see it at Briarfest. I thought it was really pretty. And right now, I would just like it to be out of the box. Um, Khaleesi is just off to the side here, and she's looking at me like I betrayed her every time one of these boxes makes noise. So that's kind of fun. Babe, it's just paper, it's not gonna hurt you. My concern is she keeps watching where I'm putting down the knife. And we all know that if cats know where the weapons are, humanity's just doomed. So here, here's the velvet bag. Um, this horse does have a base. And just looking at the size of the uh, box she was in, she's going to be a major shelf hog. So if you have fallen in love with this mold and you want them to make every color on it, that's fantastic. <laughs> but fair warning, you probably need to clean off a fairly large shelf because, yeah, she's huge. Um, hard to see, I know. Um, I'm fighting with the packaging, obviously. But that happens a lot around here. Okay. Excellent unboxing, right? She looks great. We can stop there. <laughs> All right, there she is. She has a very weird peg insert. I've not seen one that kind of looks like like that before. I don't know if I can actually show it to you or not. So anyway, um, very interesting how her base goes on. I do have the base. I'm not going to lie. I think there's more bubble wrap around the base than there was around the horse. <laughs> this is a lot. This is just a lot. <laughs> Put a montage here of five minutes of Sarah fighting with packaging. That that'd be fun to watch, right? Okay, here's her base. It's this weird little half moon thing, um, but she does fit into it nicely, so that's good. She's really pretty. I don't see any breaks or any major issues with mine. She's got kind of odd roaning, but that's I think all of them have had that. So. That's just what she looks like. Um, I'll give you a quick size comparison just because I'm here next to a couple shelves. So here's Ruffian. So you guys probably know what that one looks like. And then here's Constantia. And they're... i try and hold them the same way so you can kind of see. They're very close in length. Like exceptionally close. I don't know if that makes it better. Yeah, they're... They're going to take up a lot of space. So if you like this girl, make sure that you have a ruffian that will fit on the shelf because that seems like the most comparable of the current briars. All right, so last thing here before I go, I have the new Stablemate Club. And I believe this is... Jameson, I think is his name. It's the little um, drafter. I do not have my um, gambler's choice yet. 
but I'm hoping I'll get it fairly quickly because I love that little fjord. But anyway, here's Jameson. He's on the first generation staple mate draft mold. And I adore this mold. I think he is super cute. I'm not going to lie. I think he looks a little more pony than draft. And it might just be the cute factor is going on there. But here he is. He's a shiny little boy. And it's got just some really nice markings. It's really nice to see like the modern paint job on the older molds. Okay, I've been rambling for quite a while now. I'm going to stop um, and start packing, I guess, for this event since we leave in just a day or so. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing me kind of randomly unwrap creatures. Um, let me know which of the spooky stable mates is your favorite in the comments below and make sure that you subscribe here and on my Instagram to keep up with me and mom while we are in Florida. I'll try and get you all the information I can about ponies and palm trees over the next week. So thank you guys and enjoy your night. Bye.